And I'm telling you, the next one better have bloody jugglers and Jimmy Cricket and Beadle dressed as Shakespeare and not this shit. And now on BBC One, a star-studded mystery tour bringing comedy, music, magic and legend. Introduced by Andy Peters. Oh God, they've done it again. Another story-based show. But hold on to your riots, as what we have here is a superb two hours of light entertainment. Such an exquisite, perfectly on-brand piece of theatre. I suspect a fan of my channel went back in time and wrote this specifically for me to find. This is the 12th Children's Royal Variety Performance, staged in aid of the National Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Children. There she is. They say the royals don't work, but she's seeing these in person every year. Poor sod. Tony Spaulding, Director of Public Affairs of Vauxhall Motors Limited, the generous sponsors of this evening's performance. Now Her Royal Highness makes her way from the foyer into the theatre. Not carrying her up on your back, Peters? You some kind of Republican? While Indiana Jones has popped up in previous royal varieties as dancers, 1993's, four years after the most recent movie, is a full indie adventure with an animated title sequence which looks like Quentin Blake had a hand in it. It's the perfect opening, with Bill Oddie demonstrating flawless cartoon snoring amid a dirty dream. Oh, Madonna. Get off, get off. Oh, now leave me alone. Bill's night watchman at the British Museum. You will be transported, transported back to a forgotten age. The age of... I've forgotten. And he's guarding the show's MacGuffin, the Eye of the Little Red Idol. And they do say that if this ruby is replaced back in the Eye of the Little Red Eyed Idol by a good and caring person, then the world would be safe forever and ever and ever. And wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? If a bad person replaces it, however... And it could be the end of civilization as we know it! So who are our bumbling villains looking to destroy the world? Close not! It's Danny Minogue, is it? Danny! No, Danny, no, no! I love you! Shush. The two marks, as the German named but English accented Klaus and Otto. Mark Heap as villain in an Indiana Jones romp. Last year's show is all forgiven. Let's get that ruby. <laughs> Heap's like an art school Michael Barrymore. Otto, and I love you. I love you. This is why you get a pro like Oddie in. A double take right up there with the dad from Beadle's Guide to Practical Joking. You know, for one moment, I thought that could have been the burglar alarm, and if it had been, that would have meant that somebody would have tried been stealing the. Ah, don't believe it! Indiana, Indiana. Yes, archetypal, archaeological detective and daredevil, Indiana Jones. That's who I'm going to ring. Sorry. But I'm away on holiday at this time. This isn't a parody. That's meant to be the actual real Indiana Jones. Confirming this as side canon spin-off. Slotting into the rest of the expanded universe with Fate of Atlantis, Cup of the Vampire and Young Indy. Over the years there's been talk about recasting for a rebooted trilogy with Chris Pratt or Nathan Fillion, or even breaking off with Indy's son in the lead. But Harrison Ford's irreplaceable, and who would an audience ever buy stepping into the shoes of such an iconic character? However, my brother, Billy Jones, is looking after the business and... <laughs> Billy Pierce. Oh, oh, oh. You, you stupid, 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 stupid boy. I am Billy Jones, brother of the famous Indiana, and I've just dropped in for a bite to eat. Viewer, I am literally beside myself. And then we meet Billy Jones's Salah. Mr. Jones, there is a telephone call for you. It is a long distance. Don't worry, I think I can reach. <laughs> Mimi provides a love interest, and Bill sneaks in a joke about the French stinking. Oh, oh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, civilization will be great, but so am I. Oh, the God. Thank you. And but this is just the entree to an absolutely delightful musical number, 
right up there with Willie Scott's Anything Goes. Now listen very carefully. I shall sing this only once. Be our guest, be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin round your neck, monsieur, and we provide the rest. <laughs> Not sure about how they tried to do the catchphrase here, though. Oh, no. You stupid young man. At points during this, many points, I thought what I was seeing would never be bettered. But I was wrong, due to something which happens later. First though, in a sentence which sums up my job for the last five years, Bobby Davro comes on as Norman Wisdom, pulling a pantomime camel. I don't believe it! I don't love it, believe it! Oh. You want to buy this camel from me, Rodney? Oh, the fog of the time, old man, old man, the fog of the time, old man! Uh. In the great British tradition, while travelling the world, we'll encounter a lot of panto brownface, eastern peddlers in curly shoes singing songs from Aladdin. Oh, I come from a land from a far away place where the caravan camels roam. Where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face, it's barbaric! But hey, it's home! Those lyrics were changed for the 2019 live action remake. It looks a bit rough to me. I bet even Kate Eddy wouldn't come here. It's the great Ali Bongo. We've talked about those magic tricks from all the books as kids. The floating sausage. The wobbling pencil. But this is the first appearance of the make a big bamboo tree out of a newspaper. I am becoming increasingly distracted by thoughts of making Bongo, a biopic starring Reese Shearsmith. A chase scene with the two marks segues into another Aladdin song, lip synced by Billy Pierce. Got a key! One jump ahead of the slow post, one skip ahead of my doom. Next time, gonna use an omni blue. Guy Ritchie's version flopped because he absolutely blew the casting. You're Aladdin's right there. Let's not be too hasty. Gotta eat a lip, gotta steal to eat, otherwise we get along. The perfect melding of Disney songs with the indie trilogy. They never skimp on the references. Without the weight of the ruby, the alarm goes off. Oh, I see. I've got an idea. Put your finger on the plinth right there. There's even a tribute to Assassin's Creed. All I've got to do is go! Look at this beautiful Texas switch, aided by the camera cut, Pierce exits to the right, and as a stunt double replaces him, Billy sneaks down safely to lay in place. The next one better have bloody jugglers and Jimmy Cricket. Ladies and gentlemen, come here. I suppose as I ask for this, I'll get the blame for it. I rest my kiss. (laughs) 
A bunch of unnecessary exposition is dumped by Ron Lucas's dragon puppet. I remember something about a clue, something about three golden globes? Billy's going to cut off one of his fingers every time Jimmy Cricket tells a joke. Billy Pierce doing a rap. Is it my birthday? Excuse me, mummy, you've had your nap, but to get this clue, I must unwrap. I'm getting warm, I've had the call, I'm getting hot, I've found a ball! In another nod to Temple of Doom, things suddenly get real dark for the watching audience of kids. Where am I? Where am I? You're on the altar, about to be altered. His only way out of this is to lean into the massive Thunderbirds revival of the time. Well, I think now would be a very good time to call International Rescue. That's it! INTERNATIONAL RESCUE! The budget for this year's enormous. Princess Margaret better take a close look at her big check in case they've been skimming off the top. Given the way it's all going, who do you reckon's playing the Thunderbird? <laughs> Almost. Careful, Bobby. That's brilliant. Excuse me, did you, did you order a deep pan pizza with extra pepperoni? After the stocks incident, I'm a bit worried about him being near that pendulum. Uh, uh, we must act quickly. Worthy be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it be no in the option. Is that what you're doing? I'm acting quickly. Oh, no. <laughs> Brains calls in Lady Penelope and Parker, alias Maddie Cryer and Shane Ritchie. Yes, my lady. Fetch the rails. How more cheese, my lady? Not for the last time tonight. Shane's in a proper hurry to get his line in. A selection of both, and uh, we'll need the car as well. Yes, my lady. Cheeky Shane's been here all of five minutes before a straight-up wanking joke in a children's royal variety. If my calculations are correct, there should be something here for me to pull. There's no time for that sort of thing, Parker. <laughs> We've had a good run, before a right turn into more standard fare. The old, here's some bits from a West End musical, when Scorch brings up some old Prime Minister of Egypt called Joseph. He was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, and he spent years, years in prison. But given more recent events, what happens next might be the maddest thing on the whole show. Listen to those screams. No, that's not Jason Donovan. I closed my eyes. Scoff just deciding to switch from presenter to star of musical theatre, belting out show tunes in a hunk's wig, is one of those things that seems like it can't have happened. A weird collective national dream. One minute, you're taking calls for E17. The next, you're grunting and squealing and squawking with the animals. A crash of drums. My golden coat flew out of sight The colours faded into darkness I was left alone I hate that trend in modern horror where every ghost opens their mouth really wide. We are still waiting Still hesitating Sailing to Australia gives us the good old high seas dance number. I was born with the blood of a whaler. And the cast's first murderer, that we know of, with ship's captain Dirty Den, along with a quintessential gay, are ya? gag. From the right number! Four, three, four, five, six, seven! Jones, aren't you one? No, it's just the way I walk. <laughs> Note that rifle hit. 
One classic physical beat in a show that's a masterclass in hitting them all. They've broached the idea of pirates, and Den's pointed out the panic bell to ring if Billy spots any. But uh oh, Billy's yawning, so he's obviously going to fall asleep and let them on board. I'm absolutely creamy, cracky, doony. <gasps> this leaves one immediately thinking who's going to be the pirates? <laughs> This is the greatest day of my life. I be Captain Nook. This be me mate Smee. I want to ask you something. Something that's been puzzling me. What kind of person would live in a body like that? <laughs> Sid's quite dishy with a beard, ain't he? Wake up, me buckle! <laughs> know what the most magical seven words in the English language are? Little and large song and dance number. Hi, my name is Hook and mine is me. It's surely easy for you to see. There's sharks round here, so you'd better talk. Or else me buckle, it's the plan. As if I didn't feel enough like God made this show just for me. Shane Ritchie comes on as Peter Pan to have a knife fight with Captain Large and just shouts his own dialogue over the top of Eddie's. Although Eddie subs out of the sword fight so he won't get puffed out. <laughs> it's been plain sailing so far, but as we know, Old light entertainment is a minefield, and sooner or later, you're gonna hear a click underfoot. But what part of Australia, if only I could meet a local? <sighs> Step this way. Have a seat. All fitting well? I thought you might need that, Ryan, because the sun is a bit fierce in here. That's the flames of hell where I'll be living in about 30 years. All the blood from where they slurp at me guts with a didgeridoo. <coughs> yeah. Ugh, fuck this. It cannot be described in a picture. The mesmerizing colours of the ogres. I'm wishing I had a postcard. That you were here with me. What's this show missing? We've had Pierce, Cricket, Sid Little. That one loose spot on Blobby's head is unbelievably distracting. It's obviously a clue or something Billy's gonna pull off. Nope, he's gone. So what was that? Can Blobbies get melanomas? And listen for the one word of English Blobby says before he scarpers. No! I wonder what time it is in England now. It'd be about half past eight, I think. What would I be doing? <laughs> I'd be tucked up in bed. Go, go, go. At half eight? You should room with Geoffrey from Rainbow. Unusually for a royal variety, we're thrown into a dream sequence to shoehorn in the annual Very Frightening Costumes dance number. Ooh, what a lovely dream I've just had! <laughs> Despite so much scorch, old Ron still gets a solo spot. First words out of his mouth, cue the rap. My name is Scorch, his name is Lucas. I breathe fire, he just eats mucus. What are you doing? For a kid's show, there's a surprising amount of political jokes. It's like have I got news for you in here. 
The numbers don't make sense. Oh, well, that's because that part was written by Norman Lamont. I see, okay. Um, <laughs> kids, you're not going to get this, that your mommy and daddy are crying right now, I'm sure. <laughs> that audience of Tories, doubt it. I have broken all my promises. Let's face it, boys and girls. I'm a politician. Yes. I call this uh, the John Major Watch. <laughs> Why do you call it your John Major Watch? Because it's been up, Ed. Because it winds itself up. Oh. <laughs> nice debatable. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. One of the night's biggest reactions is for 1993's topical joke du jour. Well, you left me in the pyramid, but I escaped. I was being transported by Group 4. A trip to the jungle results in a sensitive 90s portrayal of indigenous peoples. Do you understand? But as we've learned, this year you cannot predict where any scene's going. No, oh, I know a song about that. <laughs> na, 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 na. Come on, boys and girls. Makes you want to put New Jack through a table, doesn't it? Little something for the furries. I really admire the balls on this guy. Gonna do the trick everyone's seen a million times. How can I spice it up? Manky old cardboard box the microwave came in? Honestly, just a waste of three minutes poking all those in and pulling them out. Alive and unharmed is she, mate? What do you reckon Billy Pierce tastes like? Blackpool Rock, probably. But in the distraction, Billy steals back the ruby, condemning the two marks to be eaten. No, no, Put them in the pot! Treat me gently, no, please! Not the pot! Oh, bring them back when they're done! <laughs> now Billy's at the temple to replace the ruby, which, as foretold, will unleash the power of good and save the world forever and ever and ever. What does the power of good even look like? And people shat on the alien revealing crystal skull. Imagine they'd open the ark and this knobber popped out. Three numbers they get, filling up the last ten minutes, leaving poor Billy who's been holding it all together stuck twiddling his thumbs backstage. Oh, ho, ho, oh, oh, you were brilliant, you were brilliant. Having saved the world by returning the stolen relic to its rightful home, there's only one thing left for our hero to do to take that to the British Museum! Okay. See you later, See you, In the curtain call, animal-human hybrids and living vegetables take their place next to Take That, Bobby Davro and Mrs Tiggy Winkle. <laughs> what a backdrop for the big check! Although they wimp out of having Blobby lead the cheers. Thank you very much. Now we all remember the year Sid and Eddie were cruelly snubbed a royal handshake after their Andy Pandy routine. 
but after knocking it out of the park this time, surely Margaret can't disrespect them again. No handshake for Blobby. Come on, come on, yes! This is the greatest show ever. Goodbye.